Hey guys, it's Q&A time. Every now and then I ask you to ask me some questions on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or wherever you can find me about some things that you really want to know. And so here's some answers. David Krüchten asks, why do you speak German? Well, the reason I speak German, in case you can't tell from my accent is that I'm German. I grew up in Germany. I spent the first 20 years of my life in Germany. So it's my mother tongue. Andrew Griffith asks, what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? What do you mean, an African or European swallow? Ray asks, what is a good starter software to edit videos with? For example, YouTube videos or holiday videos. Now, the two tools that I really like to recommend is for one, HitFilm Express, because it's actually free. It supports video editing, visual effects. I've got a ton of tutorials on my channel. It's actually a really good tool. And since version 12, they fixed up a lot of performance issues that people had with it before, including me. So it's actually really nice to use now. Super easy, got, again, got a bunch of tutorials on my channel. Go check that out. The other option, in my opinion, is DaVinci Resolve because again, it comes with a free version. And quite honestly, if you're just getting into it, you just want to make some YouTube videos or holiday videos, just get a free software tool to try out first. Um, so yeah, HitFilm Express or DaVinci Resolve are probably the two that I would recommend. Tree and Visual asks, what might you consider the three most important tools or concepts to master for visual effects work? Now, one of the most important concepts that I always try to get across, there's many ways to flip a pancake. Like there's not just a one way to do things, which is why I think it's also quite dangerous for people to learn sequences or button clicks to achieve something. There's always many different ways to achieve a certain effect or a certain composite, or it's all about problem solving in the end. And if you understand all of the tools you have in your toolbox, you can much better problem solve than if you, you know, just remember or memorize what this effect does. It's all about, you've got lots of building blocks and you can build something really complex, just understanding how it all works together just by being a little bit clever. Second one on a slightly more practical note, and the one thing that I see most people not do terribly great is simply matching your visual effect with your shot. And I mean that in terms of the color or the lighting in your scene. So you need to make sure that matches. You need to make sure that your grain matches. If your footage is actually really low quality and shaky, it might still be great to add a visual effect to it, but the visual effect then also needs to be grainy and shaky. Like you can't have a super high quality 3D rendered model in like some handheld shaky mobile footage. So make sure your motion blur matches, your level of noise matches, your focus. If the object is a bit further away from the camera and the camera focus is close, then make sure that the object that you're adding into it is also a little bit out of focus. So again, it all matches together. There's probably about five very, very simple things that I see consistently not done terribly well. And they're really fundamental to any sort of video compositing, no matter whether you're adding an explosion, some fire, blood splatter, some text, or, you know, like a 3D object into your scene. Just some basic making sure that whatever you're compositing matches onto the base footage is probably one of the most important ones. The third one, and I learned that the hard way and I still get it wrong, is that if you do motion tracking, 3D camera tracking or motion capture, even the slightest error in your tracking from the beginning, if your track isn't rock solid to start off with, it'll snowball. The problem will get bigger and bigger as you're trying to attach more element and build your visual effect because you're building on shaky grounds, like your track isn't rock solid, meaning that whatever object you composite into your scene, it'll start sliding about and you start trying to tweak it with keyframes and other things. It, it won't work. Make sure that if you do motion tracking, 3D camera tracking or motion capture, that your original, your initial track is absolutely rock solid. Otherwise, it'll just snowball into a catastrophe. Ron asks, what got you interested into visual effects? For me, I actually got into visual effects watching mainly Freddy W back in the days on YouTube. I think the video, The Rocket Jump, I'm going to link that down below, was one of the first ones that I saw where it just blew my mind that at a consumer level, you could create visual effects like that. And I just wanted to make videos like that. I wanted to learn how to add those effects myself and kind of the snowboard from there. And I just been doing it ever since. Ben wants to know, what's your favorite animal? My favorite animal is definitely a dog. I would love to have a German Shepherd or a Golden Retriever or a Husky main reason that's stopping me is just because they need a lot of love and care and they need to have a lot of attention. You can't just leave them and travel. And with our lifestyle, unfortunately, it doesn't really quite fit in. And Jack, with a follow-up, do you have any pets? Yes, we have five cats. A couple of them actually cameoed in a visual effects tutorial on creating the White Walker eye effect back in the day. So you can see some of our cats there. They're all rescues. We're kind of all, they're all strays and we kind of, you know, we kind of took them on. They're all so lovable and cute and they're kind of, it just grew on us and so now we have five. Philip asks, can you make a film all on your own? 
Now, I'm not sure whether you're asking whether one in general can create a film all by themselves or me personally. If it's to me personally, I can make YouTube videos. I don't think I would ever be able to make a, a, a Hollywood style movie. I don't think I'd have the time, the budget, the skill for doing that. I understand what goes into it, but I don't think I would be able to execute it myself just because I don't feel I have the skill. Now, you can make a movie by yourself. You just have to be smart about it and understand that, you know, if you if you watch Avengers Endgame, it's unlikely that a single person will be able to ever create that, even in a lifetime. There is so much manpower, so much work that goes into everything from, you know, the initial script writing to camera work to the actors to the visual effects the sound design the editing a humongous amount of people and budget and time goes into these big movies i don't think a single person can actually create them but you can create some really exciting short film projects and i've seen a lot of them done by people all by themselves you just have to be smart and clever about how much you take on and how you plan it out to make sure you can actually get it done roshan wants to know in how many movies have you worked and at which post now, I keep reminding people that I don't actually work in the industry. I work in IT, YouTube, visual effects, filmmaking. It's a hobby. I love doing it, but it's a hobby. So I haven't actually worked on any official films. Like you wouldn't see my work in a cinema anywhere. Most of my efforts in terms of movies is really I've got about six, 15, 16 YouTube visual effects short films that you can find on my website. I'm going to link you there down below. Um, they're pretty lightweight. They're kind of experimental. Just me learning things and me having fun with different themes and different styles and different effects and just really just trying things out. Tay asks, only using a brain, how long should a rope be if we wanted to climb to the moon? Asking for a friend. Hmm. Now, if I remember correctly, Earth to the moon is about 300 something, 330,000 odd kilometers, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less, somewhere around there. So I'd imagine your rope would probably be around that. Plus maybe the circumference of the Earth and the moon, if you want to wrap them once around, you know, make sure the rope is nice and tight between the two, but that'd be my guess. So Cheesenut wants to know, what's your favorite non u tutorial channel on YouTube? Hmm, it's kind of difficult. The most entertaining one, and even though it's not a tutorial tutorial channel, I learn a lot, is really Captain Disillusion. If you haven't seen Captain Disillusion yet, go and check him out. He's got amazing quality videos. He breaks down visual effects and hoaxes and other things online. And he explains exactly how they're done. He then shows behind the scenes. He usually redoes them much better. I want to link you that down below. So go and check out Captain Disillusion. Absolutely mind blowing. It's amazing, super high quality, a really funny guy as well. Like they're really fun to watch. Other than that, probably Peter McKinnon. I like a lot of his really snappy, more photography slash filmmaking ones. Um, film Ride is really great. And then obviously Video Copilot, which is kind of where I started learning. They're really complex, they're really full on, but they're amazing. It really shows you how far you can push something like Adobe After Effects to create really cool motion graphics and visual effects. So they're probably my favorites. Hack Techno Thief asks, where do you see yourself in the future? It probably wouldn't be just YouTube. I really like making training courses, but it just takes a really long time. I'd love to get more engaged with actual projects, collaborations, other things that are out there. It's just a matter of time, but also because we live in Australia, Melbourne, uh, it's actually really far away from everything else. If someone in America comes up with a, hey, here's this film project we want to do. Can you come over? I'm like, unfortunately, I'm A, far away. I need my full-time job and it's, it, I just can't manage it at the moment. But ideally, maybe someday in the future, that's probably what I'd do. Now, there were tons of other questions, but I don't want to drag this video on forever either. Thank you so much for sending in all of your questions. I've got them saved. If you have more questions, send them to me via Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, leave them down below. Um, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button to let me know. If you're new here and you want to watch more videos just like this, be sure to subscribe. And because YouTube is weird, make sure you tick that little bell to actually get notified. But yeah, thank you so much for being part of this channel, for all of your questions. And if I haven't answered something, just get in contact with me. It's just, I just don't want to make this video way too long. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I will see you later.